Hey there, foods. Big T here. Hopefully the uh, whirring sound you might hear tonight in the background isn't too bad. It's my fan and it's on because it's hotter than a bitch <laughs> right now. So uh, hopefully it's not too bad. And I want to make this video kind of short and to the point. So hopefully I don't ramble on too much here. I'll have a precise point I'd like to make. And uh, as the video title says, third party install based logic. And so to talk about that, I just want to start off with an example. And this is the example. My name is Billy, Billy the YouTuber. And I want to start a YouTube channel based on video games. I want to have all kinds of fan bases. I want the Sony fan base. I want the Microsoft fan base. I want PC guys on my channel uh, to watch and enjoy my videos. But I'm gonna start off just covering Nintendo. That's right, I'm only gonna do Nintendo games from the beginning and uh, I'm gonna try to build up my subscriber base. And my subscriber base is gonna be built up on Nintendo games. I'll do some indie stuff as well. And when I get to say 10,000 subscribers, that's when I'll start doing videos for Sony, for Microsoft, you know, and uh, PC gaming and stuff. Then I'll decide to do that because by then, you know, I'll have 10,000 subscribers who also enjoy those videos, right? <laughs> and that is apparently the third party logic. We'll sit back and we'll let Nintendo build up the subscriber base or build up the install base with their games and their games only. And fans of these other companies have no idea. Eventually, you're gonna have multi-plat games, big multi-plat games, or at least more multi-plat games on the Nintendo console. Eventually, that's gonna happen. But right now, we're gonna build that install base on Nintendo fans and people who like Nintendo-style games. Then we'll add those games. We'll add multi-plat games, games that other fan bases are, are used to and uh, somehow we're gonna pull them over uh, from their favorite consoles that they've been playing these games on for years now, decades even. Uh, we're gonna pull them over uh, to buy a Switch. Cause, oh, now we have those games that you guys want, you know, two years or whatever, a year and a half after the console's out, instead of getting those guys from the beginning and letting them know that we're gonna have the types of games that you also like and you're gonna be able to play them on the go. So that apparently is a third party logic. Um, I'm not sure why that is. And the thing is, we haven't he heard that from third parties themselves. No third party has said, yeah, we're waiting for Nintendo to build up the install base. Um, then we'll bring our games, you know. Nobody has said that. Um, to some extent, you would realize why they wouldn't say that. But nobody has said that. Um, the only thing approaching that is what Nintendo has said is that we want to drive our install base, you know, we're going to have to drive uh, that install base. Uh, we want to drive our install base basically uh, to have more systems out there for third parties to basically put their games on. And so th that is what we've gotten it from. We haven't gotten it from third parties themselves. They haven't said these things. We've gotten it from Nintendo kind of saying it, but not really. Does that make sense to you? Like if you want to start a video game channel? and uh, you want eventually to have every fan base uh, come to your channel and enjoy your content, but you start off only with Nintendo content. And then a year later, you, you know, or after you've gotten a certain amount of subscribers you feel good with, then you say, all right, now I'm gonna start catering to you guys as well. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't think that would work. I don't, I don't think that's a smart, business model there's a reason there's this thing out there called investing um, investing doesn't mean you're gonna you know make money right away investing is about the long game and you have to invest in a fan base uh, in a console early on so people will, will see that you're gonna be there and you're gonna bring the stuff that they want so you can also bring those other fan bases now 
I'm not gonna. I don't I have no problems with uh, the games that we have on Switch. I think that we have a, good, a lot of great games, especially this year. This is one of the best, if not the best, uh, first year for a Nintendo console uh, that I remember. Um, you know, but uh, for the future, you know, you want people to know that, yeah, we're gonna have other types of stuff for you guys on here too, stuff that you're used to seeing. And I don't see why. An announcement is a problem. Saying, so, yeah, we, we don't have anything for them this year, but uh, we'll definitely have something next year. And I guess, you know, I guess you can't say that because you're waiting on the install base. Yeah, of course. If there's more, there's more people on a certain platform, uh, you're going to get a couple more people to buy your game uh, just based on numbers alone. Sure. But that's no way to drive customers to your game. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll catch off some stragglers. We'll pick off some stragglers <laughs> because there's more systems. I just, I don't, I don't understand that logic. I, um, it's not a good business model. Uh, and I just don't, I just don't understand that logic. And, you know, that logic is, there's no business model for it. It's based on, you know, you know, basically what Nintendo has said. There's no platform that says, yeah, this is what third parties do because they don't do that for uh, Microsoft consoles they don't do that for Sony consoles and uh, people will say oh yeah, well we know those consoles are gonna sell you know well even if we did know that the fact of the matter is uh, those games are gonna be put out there on a console that doesn't have a big install base yet it's still gonna take a few years uh, for the install base to grow for you to make any serious money um, but you, you see those games there day one on the other consoles and I can't as a principled person accept the second uh, uh, second hand nature uh, how Nintendo and Nintendo platforms are treated I can't just sit back and oh that's just you know that's how it is I, that it just bothers me to feel like to see that third party companies would do that so it just doesn't, you know, doesn't doesn't mesh well with me. And you can look at history and say the same things about Nintendo. Like the N64 didn't have great third-party support, but the GameCube had better because it addressed a lot of the issues that uh, third parties had with Nintendo. And I feel the same same way about um, the Switch. It addressed a lot of the issues, and the third parties I'm talking about were there from the beginning. EA was there from the beginning on GameCube. If I'm not mistaken, uh, yeah, because uh, Madden 2002 was on GameCube, and you know GameCube launched after that game launched. We're gonna wait for the Nintendo install base <laughs> to grow. We're gonna, on, on Nintendo games, and then we're gonna introduce our games. I don't know. Like I said, you you you'll get a few more dollars based on that logic, but you're not driving your customers, your core customers and fans, to that platform by sitting and waiting. So um, I think that's a pretty valid argument there. But let me know what you, like I said, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you agree, disagree? Uh, thanks for watching and listening as always. And I'll see you fools next time. Peace out. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Play Nintendo, fools. Dude.